In London, just in the past hour, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson unveiled his country's plan for dealing with the outbreak of COVID-19. They are preparing to have a fifth of the workforce out sick at any given time. That's what they're preparing for. They are ready to use its military to support emergency services if needed. Meantime, here in Canada, there are three more confirmed cases in Ontario. That brings the total number of cases to 27 in this country. For more, we're joined by Amy Greer. She's an infectious disease epidemiologist. Good to have you in studio this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, there are a number of travel advisories in place for Canadians, and we're hearing today experts saying it's possible that the flu, 40 to 70 percent of the world's population could be exposed to coronavirus. Should people be reconsidering their travel plans? So I think the challenge with travel is that all travel has risks. There are certainly always concerns around food and waterborne illness, for instance. I think in this scenario, there are a couple of things that change the risk assessment. I think the first thing people should consider is being sure they're aware of the up-to-date Canada travel advisories. There's been a new one that's just been uh, put out this morning. For Iran, yeah. For Iran. Making sure that people are aware of where they're traveling and what the advisory, or if there is an advisory, also really considering whether or not um, anybody in their group, for instance, uh, would be considered high risk if they were to become infected with the virus. High risk meaning elderly or immune compromised? Yeah, or individuals with chronic underlying conditions, so things like asthma, COPD, heart disease. Um, we know from the data that those seem to predispose people to having more severe illness. Um, and also thinking about what would your plan look like if you were to uh, be required to isolate at home when you return from your travel and having a plan for what that would look like. Part of planning is a timeline. And when you look at the information coming from the WHO or other epidemiologists, they're talking about a couple months. That takes us into May. If I am looking at my travel schedules, even ahead to the summer, should I be planning for there to be restrictions in place up until May? I think right now it's still a bit uncertain. I myself have, have a number of travel uh, options booked and, I, and I'm not reconsidering those at this point. Um, and I think I'm gonna take them one at a time depending on how the situation evolves over time. But is there a timeline for how coronavirus could roll out? Like where its peak will be, when it will start to die down? So I think right now the question in Canada is that all of the cases we've seen have been travel related or individuals who've had contact with people who have had travel outside of Canada. So once we start to have community transmission, we'll have a better sense of what that's going to look like. And so right now our eye is really on being able to identify that community transmission early, and that will allow us to then start to have a better sense of how this will play out in a timeline. So still no, so, so still no definite calendar date or month? Not yet. Not yet. All right, Canada does have a plan in place. We've been asking about other countries. Uh, it's called the Canadian Pandemic Influenza Preparedness, which outlines how health agencies are going to work together in the event of a pandemic. What will our pandemic, pandemic plan look like? So the pandemic influ influenza plan for the health sector um, has been constantly revised. And so it's a very large document. Uh, it's been informed by the provinces and territories as well as the federal government and other stakeholders, so healthcare facilities. The plan has a bunch of different sections that lays out um, what we will do for lots of different things. So um, social distancing or public health measures, infection control in hospitals, vaccine, and so the plan is adaptable, it's flexible. It was developed with pandemic influenza in mind. And while this isn't influenza, it is easily flexible and adaptable to be able to address the differences in biology that we're seeing. I want to ask you about specifics because uh, Australia has implemented their pandemic plan. UK just doing it this morning. France has closed schools. You know, in Italy, we've seen uh, museums and restaurants start to shut down. What is in our plan as a, as a parent, I'm thinking, am I prepared for schools to close down, government buildings? What does, what's in our plan? Yeah, so I think right now, uh, what we need to be really thinking about as a community and as a, a province and country is about ways in which we will implement social distancing. Right now, we know there will not be a vaccine available. So the way in which we're going to slow spread once it starts is to reduce the number of contacts we have with other people. That can include things like school closure, can include working from home, 
could include cancellation or not scheduling new large gatherings. What about transportation? I mean, there's mass uh, populations on the TTC just right outside our window. Yeah, most certainly. And so people are going to need to think about what their plan will be, for instance, as you say, for getting, for getting to work. You know, are you going to take the TTC or are you going to not take the TTC? Um, and that risk calculation is going to change depending on where you live, what the, the transmission in your local environment is going to look like. And it won't be the same everywhere um, all at the same time. Amy, I want to thank you for coming in today, answering just some of the many questions we get here at Your Morning. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.